Hi everybody, it's Sally from Vintage Discoveries. I'm gonna go over some vintage jewelry, costume jewelry, the names, and um, get a little familiar with uh, their style when they were established and what they look like. I have a few examples, not every, of course, but these, I only have one example of, and this is Neridi's niece. So um, it's from France. It was established in the 1980s. These are, I think, a really nice example of what they do. Some clip-on earrings. Brushed gold tone. I think it's 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 a classic look, but you could wear it today, no problem. This is the one and only example I have of Sandor. Let me show you what it looks like. Pretty simple marking. And this seems like a pretty desirable uh, brand. I haven't found too many. This is the only one that I have, actually. It was established in um, 1938 and went on to the 1970s. And they are from New York. Got it. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was in there, but um, yeah. This is a lightweight bracelet. I, It's kind of painted enamel. Um, not the greatest example of what they do, but it's the only one I have, so I think it's all right. So we have these gorgeous earrings. They actually go like this on the ear. The Aurora Borealis and the uh, Faux Pearl. This is Kimberly with two E's. They are one of the prettiest earrings that I have. I do find some things from Kimberly, um, but once again, not that often. Um, with the Kimberly jewelry, I couldn't find too much information, but um, it was established I would, in, that's what I found, the 1960s. I don't think they're making jewelry anymore, but you can let me know if you've got different information. This one is Vandel. I'll show you the signature here. It's kind of in script a little bit, gold filled. They made a lot of gold filled items. These are not, as far as I know, genuine stones, but I love the atomic look of this. This is one of my favorite pieces out of all of them. And um, they were established in 1938 and in Rhode Island, which a lot of jewelry costume makers were, which surprised me, uh, to 1998. And then they um, were bought out by um, actually... Um, a British company, uh, Kremens, Kremens, K-R-E-M-E-N-T-S. And Kremens is still making items, I believe, today. But their stuff, when you come across Vandal, it's quality and really pretty stuff. This... Initially, when I when I picked it up, I thought it was Renoir, but it actually is Roberta Hoffman. Let me show you there. No, it's Rosalind, her sister. No, just kidding. It's Rosalind Hoffman. Um, so that surprised me. I have not run across many other copper jewelry that um, was signed. And this, um, not much information on her except for that 
her company was established in 1950. So that was cool, pretty cool. This is uh, Renoir, and sometimes it's marked Renoir and Matisse. This is just Renoir on the back, and they deal with primarily copper uh, from the 1940s to 1964, and they were based in California. I've had a few of their items, and they're all made very well. This is Listener. Little rubbed off there, but you can see it. I love their items. Their jewelry is is really nice quality. I haven't run across too many that I think are cheaply made. This one I really like. It's very nice. We have this little poodle from, and I'm gonna mess up the name. It's Mamzelle. I wanna say Mamzelle, but it's Mamzelle. And they were established in 1962 in the US. And it was BB Greenberg Company. Let's see, it's really hard to see, but that's where it says it. Mamzelle, Mamzelle. I think that's the only one I have from that company. This is Cremants. And I've learned my lesson from the past. This is also a pendant that they are signed on the pin. And I'm sure I've passed up a lot of things that were marked and I didn't know. It's very hard to see, but it's there on the actual pin. They're uh, very, very well made. I wish I had more, believe me. When I run across it, I try to pick it up because their, their workmanship is really spectacular. This is, I wrote everything down, see? Uh, Pauline Raider. It's got the cartouche, that little thing. And I'm missing, of course, some of these little blue beads and some of the little pearly things, um, which I found out were called ballatini, which helped tremendously because I have to I have to get some of those ballatinis because I have a lot of a lot of beautiful things missing those unless they're prong set. They are usually the first ones to go. Also pearls. And Pauline Raider started in 1962 to 1982. It's one of my favorite things with the little ballatinis. Love it. Okay. Now. BSK. This one is massive. Where is the BSK? Here it is. Oh. There it is. And BSK started in 1948 to the 1980s. It stood for... Benny Steinberg, uh, another person, they don't say the whole name, it's Solovit and Caslo. Who knew, right? But um, this, unfortunately, is a little scratched up, but it's very impressive. I'm not sure if you can tell how big it is, but it's massive. And something I read about uh, BSK, they actually made a keychain um, that was given in a premiere for um, My Fair Lady. And it was, and I don't don't think I've watched it or saw it, but there's um, Higgins. This guy has kind of like a, a hat he wears all the time. It's a Higgins hat. And they made um, 
uh, keychain with it and some little stones encrusted for people who were invited to this premiere. So that's pretty exciting for them. Then I have Benedict, New York, 1955 to 1983. Um, and it was Howard Benedict. This, um, I don't know if it's supposed to be a hat, a bird's nest, but I'll show you what it looks like here. Benedict, New York. Don't run too many, across too many of those either, but when I do, I'm pretty excited. This is H-A-R for Hargo Creations. Um, 1955 to 1957, pretty short-lived. This one is enamel and metal. Let me show you what it looks like here. I mean, if it has the C on there, and I'm thinking it was after the 57, but I couldn't find too much information on it. But I like the mix of the enamel always. When there's enamel involved, I'm happy. This is surprising to me because I definitely didn't think it was going to be marked, but it's actually Weiss. And Weiss, I usually find a lot of clear rhinestones um, like this. This is also Weiss. Got some dead stones in it, but still Weiss. So that's what I'm used to with the Weiss. So I was pretty excited to find this because that was definitely not what I'm used to. So I love both of them, of course. This is Best. Now, Best was established in 1957 to 1997 by Sidney Lewis in Virginia. This is the hardest one to research because putting in Best vintage jewelry or jewelry, vintage best, you know, anything best. You come up with what they think youth want as the best items, um, the best, you know, jewelry. It's just hard, but I did come up with it. <laughs> um, a lot of the best that I have run across are very um, simple, uh, gold tone, silver tone, bold, um, this is probably the most intricate, exciting thing. They usually don't have any other dimensions to it, but this is one big fish in one big, um, not clasp, you know what I'm saying, bale. This is Winard. From what I read about Winard, Winard, is that they did make a lot of gold-filled uh, items with genuine pearls, things like that. Um, I don't run across this often, and I wish I did, because I think their um, workmanship is probably one of the best, and especially when you, you're talking about gold-filled. Um, I think it just lasts throughout the year so much better and it has such a rich look to it you know just like that nice gold color you know the brushed gold it just looks like quality to me now we have I'm thinking this does that um what do you could say a Christian, a Christian <laughs> look to it. This is huge. And M. Gent. This is the only one I've ever run across. Um, it was the 1970s to 1990s. And this was Rhode Island also. It was um, M. Gent or M. J. Enterprise, you might see. But very big. I want to say a, a true skin. 
I think that's what I'm trying to say. This is, I have the other earring, but this is featherweights. Now, I'm not crazy about this jewelry. It's very light. It's usually this um, celluloid. Um, there's another word for it called uh, bubble light. And it's, it's usually like this. It's kind of whitewashed. There's some, um, it's like antiqued. Um, I don't know why it's not my favorite. Um, doesn't always have that uh, antique wash of the, the black on it. Sometimes it's just white uh, or off-white. Um, and it is very light. And it's just a light uh, celluloid. It's interesting. I'll give it that. Now, this is not a good example of this jewelry because I know uh, they make some nice jewelry. It's Barclay. It's written in kind of script. Barclay. There's something missing from there. I don't know what it would be. Um, but Barclay was for 1942-1957, and they were also established in Rhode Island. On Rhode Island. However you want to say it. I never knew that about Rhode Island. This is Castle Cliff. Missing a piece here, unfortunately, but I'm sure I could find something. Maybe a, I don't know. Let me show you what it looks like. The signature or the hallmark, whatever you want to call it. I only had one other castle cliff and it was a mushroom and I sold it. These are pretty collectible. And it's rare that you come across them. At least it is for me. Um, yeah, that looks like an, I can use like a grain of basmati rice and get away with it. But I would like to just repair it because it's really cool. It's very different. They were established in 1918 to 1977. And it was Clifford Faust. So I think what I'll do is just put it on that Facebook group where it's restore, repair, and people try to find um, pieces that they're missing. And sometimes they have, you know, people on there have them. So it's great. This is AJC. Very whimsical. You would almost think, oh, it's probably a JJ, but it's AJC which um, was from 1927 to 1990 um, in the U.S. And it was also marked as AJMC, All-American Jewelry Company. And then they were in um, Pennsylvania. But yeah, right away I would think JJ, but this is AJC. Very cute. This is beautiful with the little rhinestone. Really nice work on the um, the brushed gold. I really like that. And then we have Van Dome. It's actually a subsidiary subsidiary of Coro from nineteen forty four to nineteen seventy nine. This is one Van Dome piece that I have here part of a necklace that is no more very well made though I have these earrings the other one is somewhere um, I thought they were really super neat random this is plastic but very cool another random this is plastic but it just I love the way that it's molded and the different colors. It's very 70s to me. I love it. And the Van Dome, it does have this symbol here, almost like a sword. Sorry, I whistled. And I'll get a close up of that Van Dome. Hopefully, I'm saying it right. Now, this is. 
rare find for me because I have never seen this name. And this is Beaux-Art from Italy. And I just, I found that it was from the 1970s to 1980s. It's a very heavy necklace actually because it's, these discs are glass. Let me show you what it looks like. Beaux Art Italy. Yes, this is the first find for me for that company. So pretty thrilled about that. Now you could probably guess what these are. JJ. It's Jonette Jewelry. And the two sons of John and Etta uh, established the company in 1940 to 2006. Um, so they combined the father and the mother's name, John and Etta, Janetta, Jeanette Jewelry. I'm saying it wrong. This is a big chubby B, a JJ. This that I think is so cool with the tri-coloring. And this, I believe, donkey which is super cool. Love that. And another one of my all-time favorites, Sinear. From 19, uh, 1892, they were established um, to the day. They still have a website with jewelry you can buy. I've seen things on there um, starting at um, their initials. They have initials um, starting at $50. And they have these actual little ballatinis. Oh, they're beautiful. I'm thinking about getting an initial pendant. So this is the Sinear. It's not very fancy writing, but they have beautiful jewelry. I also have some missing uh, ballatinis on here that I want to get replaced because this is one of my favorite bracelets ever. And we have Koro. I love this. It's missing a stone, unfortunately, but it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, Koro was 1901, 1902, uh, incorporated in 1913 in Rhode Island. Again, this is got its tag on still with the Pegasus. Even though, you know, these are just plastic, they're very nice. They're, I don't, they're so versatile. I don't know how to explain it. Gold, silver, black, you know. Um, they changed to Coral Craft in 1961 to 1969. I have tons of Coral. It's just too much to show. These are also Coral. I think just Coral, let me see. Yes, just Coro. Beautiful amber stones. Love it. And I think that's all that I have for tonight. I have a whole bunch more that we can go through um, on the next video. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back soon. Thanks. Bye.